Welcome back to Crowns Crypto Cave, waking up for a very early and eventful Saturday morning over here in Helsinki, Finland. Want to be wishing you well, want to be wishing you the best of the best. And my God, we finally have something new to look at. So, of course, the more bullish of the two scenarios was uh, was activated. And now I'm actually a little bit long in my main account. So with that said, let's get into the live scene. And as always, wish you the best of the best. So, oh, yes, that's right. I always have to set this up so I remember to talk about this. But all my programs are on sale for the rest of the month as it is the one-year anniversary of this channel, the one-year anniversary of this community, actually. And that means that the Trade Like a Professional program, the Master Your Options program, and the Jewel Indicators are all on sale with 20% off. Use the code, as you see right here, year 20 in all capitals, Y-E-A-R, and then the number is 20. So of course, I always wanna make sure that when explaining these um, when explaining these programs, that they are for the people who really wanna go deeper, who really want to learn technical analysis, and trading, more importantly, trading as a whole, as the technical analysis program is fully encompassing, as a living. So I understand that that's not going to be most people, which I want to make very, 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 very clear that if that is not you, then these programs probably are way too much overkill. You don't need them. They are just going to be too much. And uh, and really, to be quite honest, all my free content will get you probably 99.9% .9 of the way that you want to be. I have plenty of free um, playlists in, the YouTube, in my YouTube channel. So definitely check that out. But if you are that person who wants to go a little bit deeper, then these would be designed for you. Uh, understand that they are the programs are the technical analysis program and the master your options program are 35 hour long plus programs and then of course not only that but you also be you know investing into the hidden members only discord community so i want to make sure that that you know the integrity of that group stays similar so i always want to get that out there that hey if you aren't fully if you don't have that full conviction then probably not for you but of course, for the people who are, well, then that's exactly who it's designed for. So with that said, let's uh, let's take this off and get back on over to the actual charts as we actually do have something new to talk about, which is, <sighs> it feels so fucking good. We have something new to fucking talk about. Oh my God. Uh, I don't know. I, I don't know if I could, t could have taken another week of this, uh, of this action right over here, but of course, all lower time frames cl closing over the critical area that we've been speaking about, that 3940-ish area, I believe, all the way up to perhaps... And eight hour? No, the eight hour has not officially closed above, but six hour has, and that's good enough for me. Uh, overall, if Bitcoin does come back down to about 39.60 a share, I'll actually start along on my streamer account. I do not have a long position on my streamer account, only my main account. Uh, when I wake up in the, you know, when I wake, when I, when I, when I get woken up by alarms in the middle of the night, I only do, I only do actions on my main account because it's like. I just want to fucking sleep, man. But I actually did take a long on my main account, and I'll be searching for a long anywhere right around here, which is also a six hour 377. I'd imagine that anywhere anywhere right above about 3950-ish area, probably going to be defended if it's going to maintain the more bullish posture, which I believe it probably is. Um, so, of course, all higher time frames are signaling. Well, we haven't really gotten closes just yet, so, you know, it always can morph around. But uh, you do see that the two-day uh, 50 exponential actually actually is coming in right around the current price action. Did get the last high, and that is what we're struggling with right now. That will be ending later tonight, I believe. No, sorry. We just got a new tick on this. We just got a new tick on this, actually. Okay, so this is completely new uh, two-day dollar. All right, well, fair enough. What is the two-day uh, Stokes looking like? Yes, they are crossing up. So this is obviously going to take another two days to confirm. Sorry, I thought it was any tonight, which would have which would have which would have held a lot more weight. Um, but uh, but we're, it looks like we're actually going to have to wait on this uh, on this guy on this gal on this gender neutral <laughs> indicator. Um, two-day uh, RSI looking fine to me actually. Two-day or sorry, uh, two-day jewel actually bouncing off of the uh, bouncing off of one of the signals, but not a full signal in and of itself. I want to go back to the daily. However, daily stokes never cross down. And this is the power of the daily stokes, which just have, you know, I really don't like trading on the opposite side of them is the uh, is the whole thing. And you do see that on the way down, it got the whole, you know, got the whole move down from the last stab at 4,200 all the way down to 36. And it's been up ever since. So, you know, looking at something like this, uh, I wouldn't really, you know, I'd kind of be looking at, at, at this as like an overall gauge for this move. Essentially, as long as that is uh, pointed up, I do not want to be short. Um, don't want to be holding directional shorts at the very least. Uh, and by the same token, I really don't see all that much stopping from, you know, this 4150, 4200 a share, just right where we were last. Let's put on the volume profile and see what it's suggesting. Uh, we do see a little bit of activity. Yeah, exactly. Right around 4150. So I imagine if we do get back around there, probably will initiate some selling. And that would be the first uh, first area that I look for for like a major pullback, some some consolidation going on. But for right now, uh, lower time frames look good. All lower time frames look good to me. Um, let's get these guys 
off or let's take off the or no no no. i want to show the volume profile on the lower time frames first uh yeah you do see some activity right where we are right now right around the low 4000th number that is also the 12 hour uh 200 exponential as well if you can see right here whoops it's just kind of coming in uh 12 hour actually gets it quite well indeed you see this massive spike right here and also the uh the 200 exponential all coming into conflict with each other and Jewel actually given a long signal uh, in the early morning hours as well. So not bad. 12 hour Stokes will be crossing up fresh cross up defending getting out of the bullish control zone. So this is uh, this is pretty good setup right here. Uh, I'd imagine that the next sort of uh, key of this. And I think that this is probably what does happen is that we actually close this 12 hour delta above the 200 exponential. Now, of course my opinion is unneeded you know i don't trade my opinion i, I trade technical analysis and if the uh and if the 12 hour does close below the 200 exponential right here does that necessarily mean that the move is over and that it's never going to go higher no not necessarily um but i would be looking for that move back down to uh to perhaps tap around 39.50 ish area um, by the same token if we do end above the 200 exponential I would be looking for more immediate continuation to about the uh, 4150, 4200 level. Uh, more immediate meaning, you know, within within the next few days. Uh, you do see some interesting some interesting things going on with the volume metrics right here, uh, which if we were be held in below the 200 exponential in the 12 hour, we, you could make the argument that 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 this is just consolidation. But I don't believe that that's the right way to be interpreting this. I I, th I think right now is a time where you have to realize. If even if you are overall bearish, it's not the right time to be fucking bearish right now. Again, my big area was right here at 3930. As soon as that got taken out, this blue box territory right here, no, uh, from 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 a more higher time frame perspective, I just don't I don't really see the I don't really see the immediate uh, the immediate bear case. Does that mean that I believe that the overall lows are in? Probably not. Still, uh, again, all of the macro areas have still not been hit, even with this nice hundred hundred fifty dollar move. Um, <clears throat> doesn't mean that they can't on it can't change on this move. But for now, macro t you know all, all the macro time frames still still not hit um so again let's go actually go over to cmes which cmes did not get the same breakout and this is what does concern me so presenting the other side as uh, as i will be a little bit more bullish innately right now um but presenting the other side for the bears uh cme cme charts which i do believe run this market uh did close the week out at 38.90 which is right alongside this trend line right here going all the way back from late November, which has governed all the last one, two, three, four, five, maybe six highs. So here's going to be the next thing for me on the medium time frames is that if spot opens up above 3,900, sorry, if spot is above 3,900 when CMEs open up at 7 p.m. Eastern time on Sunday, then I will be I will be very bullish for probably a move all the way to here, 4,200, uh, 4,250, something like that. Uh, uh, ex exactly where the 89 exponential is, kind of where your prior highs are were, uh, were as well. That is if, again, if spot is trading above 3,900 when CMEs open on Sunday. If we do get a, one of those major hunts that we saw um, a couple weeks ago, two, three weeks ago, where we got this guy right here. Let me just take everything off. We got this guy right here over the weekend then that would kind of change the scores. But for now, that's I, I don't really think that that's what's, I, I, don't, I don't think that's really the main interpretation of this. Um, and I do think that it's it's quite likely that uh, that, that spot is trading above 3,900. But hey, if it were to, you know, if it were to come back down below 3,900 before CME's open at uh, 7 p.m. Eastern time on Sunday, then yes, I would be, I would be immediately bearish. But I, again, I, this, this looks fine to me. If we do open above this area, it's also going to be be taken out of this trend line for the first time in you know three four months. That's a big deal, and I'd be looking for straight up continuation uh, rather quickly to about forty two, maybe even above forty two hundred uh, before the first major uh, pullback. Um, so yeah, let's go see how GBDC closed on the week. The GBDC actually, yeah, again, having a nice pick me up off this, uh, playing rope it up along the support and right above this horizontal right here, you know, overall trying to reaccumulate is what it looks like to me into some sort of an ascending triangle, most likely as long as it holds this trend line at $4 and 42 cents, you know, as we were saying yesterday, I don't really, I, I don't really see a reason to be bearish on this just yet. Yes, there is bearish divergence on the daily, but I believe that's already played out. I believe that it's already played out. 
you know, we had one, two, three stabs and all the way back down from, uh, what was this? This was a good percentage move now, wasn't it? Yeah, about 11% move. I'd say that that played out. Um, and now we're just kind of coming back up and reaccumulating. So, you know, resistance right around here, 482. Again, I'm going to need to see the open on this on Monday, but I would imagine that if Bitcoin does break out, we're also going to see GBTC open above 490. Um, and as far as GBTC is concerned, this thing, this thing actually has a little bit more room to run. We might even fill the gap all the way at, uh, five, you know, $5 30 cents, which would put spot somewhere around, you know, 4,500, 4,400, which is kind of where my personal opinion does, does is more in line with, but, uh, but for now. You know, just going to go back to Bitcoin. Very low time frames. Does look like we found a local top right here. Uh, shooting star total in the very low time frames and continuation off of it. Uh, hourly stokes will be, you know, likely crossing down. Um, but I'd just be looking for a pullback here. And and anything right around the top of this blue box territory, I'd actually, you know, that's actually where I'm going to look for a long in my stream account. So I will actually play this on my stream account, the first trade in, in, a, in a while. <laughs> I mean, it hasn't really been too eventful in this range right here. Um, so, yeah. Uh, what else do we have to look at? Um, let's go. Let's go over the medium time frames. We haven't really done this just yet. Uh, two hour. What's two hour looking like? Two hour stokes are are pointed down. Are crossing down. Did have a good close on the last one. So if this were to come down, I would just be looking for a little bit of a pullback. I think that you know probably have a quick tap. Um, if this is going to be the if this is going to be the way, it's you know it's likely going to be a quick tap somewhere right around you know mid mid thirty nines and then uh, and then back up back above four thousand. I do want to see I I really do want to see Bitcoin start to close some four hour dildos above four thousand. That would be significant as long as we're kind of kicked out of four thousand on the you know on the medium to higher time frames. Mm, a little bit more hairy, I suppose, but. Uh, Overall, I mean, this to me is, is is starting to look a little bit more clear. Uh, uh, taking out all these resistances that we spoke about for the past prior couple weeks is a big deal. Uh, taking out the 89 exponential, which is not confirmed just yet, but looking good so far. But a long day ahead, to be fair. Um, but looking at the looking at the setup on the also just looks fine to me. Uh, even daily jewel was given a this this would be considered a little bit of a buy signal, not something that I took myself as I gave it to you actually all the way over here at thirty eight fifty, which now looking pretty damn good. Um, but let me just make sure that I'm actually recording. There we go. Okay, good. Um, but. Assuming that we do close above the 89, which I, I think is quite likely right now, uh, this is likely to come become strong support, uh, which is now coming in around 39.30 still. So yeah, um, so not only that area, but we're also going to have a contention with our other major higher time frames by end of day on Sunday. So this is this is a critical next 48 hours, I suppose you could say. If we go over here to the two-week digital time frame, I've been following this as well. The two-week uh, 10 simply moving average also coming in right around that 3,900 level. So it's a daily 89, essentially. It, it will be the two-week uh, 10 simply moving average, which we have been unable to, to both open and close a two-week digital above since you know January of 2018, all the way over here. And ever since then, it's actually been the major resistance going all the way through. Now, you will notice that we actually did close above it in July of last year, but not not able to both open and close above it, which to me just, you know, offers up the opportunity for a hunt. As you can see right here, just immediately faded on the next move. Anyways, that red 10 simple is again coming in right around, actually a little bit above 3,900. 3, it's uh, 3,910. So right in confluence with the daily uh, 89. If we do close above this, I would be looking for a run probably around, I mean, t uh, on this guy would look, would look around 4,350. So, so again, you know, when it when it comes down to it, where am I looking for on this move? If it does get some more continuation, 4,200, I think extremely likely. Um, 4,350, 4,400 is where it gets a little bit more interesting. Uh, but we still do have these two moving averages crossing the downside of each other, which would which would which would say that the overall trend is still to the downside, which I'd agree with. We're not really making higher highs until we actually you know take out uh, and start closing some higher level dildos above 4,100 or so. Uh, on you know on the weekly on the two week which again we'll be closing this this Sunday at 7 p.m. Eastern, sorry not 7 but 8 p.m. Eastern time and this would be a short term change of behavior if this were to happen and would tell me that overall I'd be looking for a more extended run into the 4000s and spend some time in this area again like I said uh, you're going to have your pumps in your bear market you're going to have your dumps in your bull market but this is this 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 can certainly have some juice to it uh, depending upon where we close these next higher time frames, but to me, it's it's you know if going off the lower time frames, uh, I would be saying that they're you know it, it looks like it's going to happen. It does look like it's going to happen to me. So, again, um, what else did I want to say? Oh yeah, you know it is it is it is a weekend. It, I'm trying to find counterpoints because I don't want to be too one-sided with looking for just bullish stuff. Um, 
but it is the weekend and the weekend has been notorious for major hunts which it is very interesting to me that as soon as the CMEs closed, as soon as stock market closed, that was when you saw Bitcoin actually take out that resistance on the lower time frames, that, that critical 39, 30-ish area, which does make me a little bit skeptical because the last time that we really did that was, well, this area right here where, you know, we spent the whole week kind of grinding a major resistance, kind of like we did right over here. And then as soon as Saturday hits, as soon as we get that new massive girthy dildo, well, that's when the, that's, the, uh, uh, that's when the, that's when the hunt happened, uh, done on relatively low volume, which so far, you know, it's a little bit lackluster as well. So I am, uh, I am a little bit defensive about that. I'm. I think that it's. I think it's a little bit less likely to happen. But this would have been. This would have been so much more cut and dry if it happened on a weekday. So that would be. That would be probably my bit. My biggest criticism of this move. You know, the volume. The, the the volume. The lack of conviction. And the fact that it's just on a weekend. Uh, but for all intents and purposes, I would be respectful of it. You know, for now. Um, like I said, only major resistances that I see coming in in this re region is uh, the two-day uh, 50 exponential. Maybe the three-day has some around here as well. No, it does not. It's all the way at 43.50. So yeah, we have we actually have multiple things pointing to 43.50. Um, so yeah, you know, o o overall. That would be that would be essentially what I'm looking for. Uh, I'm curious how are the other market leaders holding up right now. I'm guessing that Mrs. Litecoin probably did something pretty crazy last night, and she did. She did. She had a very phenomenal move. Uh, daily closing extremely strong, and I don't really see anything stopping her from about 64. Is it 64? No, 63 and a half, 64 bucks. Yeah, I, I don't really see anything stopping her from that. Uh, if we put on the drawing tools, you will notice that there is a massive, or there should be a massive horizontal right here. In fact, I don't have it in right now, but there we go. And it's also a 377 on the daily. Uh, if we do hit this area around 63 and a half. 64, uh, 64 bucks. I'd imagine that puts Bitcoin somewhere around that 4100 ish area. Um, and then I'd be looking for a pullback right there. We do have daily Stokes actually uh, crossing back up. We do have daily RSI bucking the trend right here. So what could have been what or what was one, two, three, four touch bearish divergence is unlikely to play out. It, it, it's unlikely to play out. Um, especially with making a higher high for that last one, that, that was very critical. So Mrs. Litecoin, once again, the best argument for perhaps the market cycle changing around, but still has to get through that uh, $64 area. But I, I don't see anything really stopping her from that area right now. Uh, overall, could set up definitely the definitely one of the better looking charts out of the uh, out of the top market caps as it has been for the past, well, I don't know, like Jesus Christ, man, like a month or two. It's definitely, a, it's definitely had the better responses. Um, still in the context of this overall ascending broadening wedge, which is typically a bearishly resolved pattern, and where that resistance of this pattern be coming in around $64, right around the, all that area. So I would be looking for a pullback right there. Um, at, at the very least, I'd look for, you know, a pullback into consolidation. Um, but I wouldn't get bearish on this. And, and really, when it comes down to, parent, to playing a pattern, I wouldn't get bearish on it until it actually breaks the pattern, as uh, that would be initiated by a move down below about $50. So as you can see, Mrs. Litecoin's got a lot of work to do right now, and she's got, she deserves a lot of respect, actually. She's a very independent and proud woman, and she don't need no Bitcoin to rally, actually. Uh, she's been leading the market to the upside and very, 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 very impressive. In fact, Mrs. Litecoin did lead, uh, did lead the whole crypto market out of the bear market in 2014 2015 we can just go back and verify this really quickly here's um here's the same sort of downtrend that we saw in 2014 2015 this is like when bucking the trend out i would i would argue right here officially in june in late june of 2015 and we have the same thing from mr bitcoin bucking the trend right here i would argue which was november of 2015 so actually initiating it like what uh three four months beforehand so it could mrs Litecoin be a harbinger of light for this market perhaps but again i don't believe that the overall lows for this market are in um as most of the major you know all, all, all of the major things that i look forward to be most of a major market cycle low have just not been hit even with this move, of course, you know, things can get drawn out. But uh, let me just remind myself and also perhaps you, the macro areas that I'm looking forward to, to be demonstrative of a new macro direction being put in on Bitcoin, aka how do I know that I'm going to be wrong about the lows not being in with price action? Because, of course, with every sort of, you know, with, with every sort of um, potential idea, there has, to be a, there has to be a trigger for when I know that I'm wrong. And I would know that I'm wrong, first and foremost, uh, or at least I'd have my my my. My first big 
uh, indication is, is if the 200 exponential right here on the weekly got took, got taken out. And what I mean by taken out is, I mean, it needs to be both open and closed above on a weekly total time frame. that's coming in right around 4,100. So that has been governing all of our highs for the past four months, one, two, three, four, and perhaps, I mean, really don't see too much stopping us from there right now, um, on the weekly. And, uh, and if we could do that, I'd drastically change my tune on Bitcoin, but it wouldn't be, it, it wouldn't be enough in, in and of itself to both open and close above it. If we could close Close a monthly dildo, however, above the yellow 21 exponential, that would be a big deal to me. That would be a phenomenally big deal to me. And I'd, in my, and personally, I'd become instantly bullish off of that. The more traditional people would still say, you know, wait for 6,000 to be broken, which is the third and final most piece. But uh, but for myself, that would be good enough. That's all the way at 5,200 right now. Uh, just for prior past sake, we do see that in 2014, 2015, once Bitcoin regained the yellow 21 exponential, that was when, you know, it actually went straight up for the next three years. So fair enough. You know, if that were to happen, I'd be I'd be bullish for the long term. Right now, that's obviously well and far away. But there's a couple things to be aware of on this chart, actually, because as these two move now, just approach each other, the red 10 simple and the yellow 21 expansion, that actually puts downwards pressure on price action as a lot of a lot of the bots, a lot of the algos are going to be looking at that to signal just an intensification of, of their selling algorithms. And uh, if we were to rally up maybe above 5,000 by end of month, then we will avert that crisis. But assuming that it does not, it will cross the downside. And then, of course, like I said, the third and final and most important, but you're probably going to know beforehand, but the most traditional way of doing it is that if Bitcoin got back above 6,000, zero reason to be bearish after that. Um, to be very, 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 very clear. So. Again, um, for now, I'm, I, I guess you could say that I'm a cautious, uh, I'm a cautious bull. I mean, that's not really right. Do I, th am, am, I am I bull? Am I bull curious? I don't know. Uh, no, I, I, I'd be bullish on the lower time frames. Um, you know, I'd look for, a, I'd look for a pullback relatively soon, anywhere around 3950, 3960 would be okay. And as long as Bitcoin maintains above 39, 3950, I'd say, uh, you know, it's, it, it's overall to be interpreted as good action. If I put back on the drawing tools right here, as long as we assess essentially maintain right above this uh, this critical area right here, which is technically, yeah, a few ticks below 3950, I would be overall bullish um, for a move likely to 4200 and beyond. So that's going to change probably a lot of the, uh, it's probably going to start to change a lot of the overall picture. So we will have a lot of things to, 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 to freshly discuss over the, over the next coming weeks, which actually is exciting. Um, some more trade ideas. Anyways, uh, we talked about GBTC. We talked about, um, we talked about CME futures. Let's go, let's go look at the longs and shorts. Longs and shorts really have not moved all that much. Well, I guess, I guess they've moved a little bit. We've gained about a thousand longs as you'd imagine. And we've also gained about a thousand shorts. So they're maintaining their overall positive with, with uh, amongst each other, but we're not getting the reaction that I'd be looking for on shorts coming into this red box territory that we've been speaking about um, for the past uh, for the past couple of weeks. As each and every time that Bitcoin has gone down in this red box territory for shorts, so those are where the major dumps have emerged from. You know, this was your dump from twelve thousand to six thousand. This was your dump from ten thousand to six thousand. This was your dump from eighty four hundred to six thousand. This was your dump from sixty three hundred to three thousand. And then getting this region once again, we're not we're you know we're actually pumping from it. To me, that is the first initial thing that is saying something new is going on from a medium time frame perspective um as this this is not what you you know that this this is against the former trend so it's very good to realize this right now because you don't want to get stuck into you know you don't want to get or at least i don't want to get stuck into a formal way of thinking if it's not going to be working anymore of course the trend is your friend until the end of the trend and right now the trend is uh is changing so you can change with it or or not, um, but longs. I mean, is there is there too much to be said about longs? Longs actually letting go a lot of their positions. Longs got all the way up to twenty four and a half thousand. Jesus Christ, uh, getting rid of their positions immediately. That is a little bit concerning. A lot of distribution going on, so people aren't too. Uh, pe people don't have too much conviction with holding these positions right now. Um, but I'd still overall say that uh, you know longs definitely do have the up, you know definitely do have the upper hand right now. It's not like they're 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 not getting liquidated. They're taking profits, whereas shorts getting liquidated. Um, so again, you know, looking at something like this, it is it it, it is concerning, or maybe not concerning is the right word, but we do have something new going on, uh, most likely. Anyways, go check out Mr. Buterol. What's he doing, Mr. Buterol? In 
Did he take out the uh, critical 143, 144, and a 144 area? Um, not confirmed just yet, actually. So Mr. Buterell, certainly the biggest laggard of the bunch, uh, definitely the weakest of the big three. But if you can actually confirm above this area, 143 and a half, which looks pretty likely in the next 55 minutes and 25 seconds on this four-hour total close, I'd be looking for a move over to about 1, 152 and a quarter. So Mr. Buterell not having the same sort of reaction that we're seeing on, on Litecoin, on Bitcoin, which to me tells me that uh, I'd, I'd adjust for it being, you know, a degree weaker, which would probably put him around 152 and a half, 153 if it were to, uh, you know, if, if Bitcoin takes that next leg to uh, to 4150, something like that. Um, overall, Mr. Mr. Butero has a lot of work to do. Uh, from the higher time frame perspective, it's not really until this this gal, this guy, this girl, <laughs> this guy, <laughs> this girl, uh, gets back above 162 and a half, where the where the median, where where like the higher time frame perspective starts to change around a little bit. Just this horizontal right here, kind of matching up with our last past prior highs. Also, keep in mind that this is still forming the overall formation of a rising channel, uh, which is typically a bearishly resolved pattern. But you do see that the pink 200 and some moon average is coming in right around where right around that 162 161 and a half high so likely to be defended if if mr buterol is allowed to get above there i'd imagine that bitcoin would be somewhere around 4350 4400 and that also start to make a lot of sense as um i'd imagine if mr buterol does get back around this area it's probably gonna be probably gonna be a uh, pretty nasty rejection uh whether it's 161 and a half i mean if that you know if that area gets taken out we see bitcoins you know go go somewhere right around uh 4800 perhaps 4700 then then maybe you see mr buterol right around 181 and a half 20 or sorry 182 um but i'm not i'm still not too convinced on him uh definitely the weakest of the bunch so uh, gonna, gonna, gonna have to play that one by ear. Daily Stokes still up, looking good. Daily RSI actually looking pretty damn good as well. So a lot of good indications here. Uh, and I do think that this one gets continuation with the overall market, but it's certainly the weakest of the bunch, which is not where, you know, n not the one that I want to be trading, uh, especially if we're going to be going counter trend. Uh, Bitcoin in comparison looking a lot stronger and Litecoin looking the strongest. Um, so, 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 so what else do we have to talk about? Let's go over. Let's. We haven't looked at the eight hour. Yeah, eight hour looks good to me. Eight hour three seven seven will be coming in right around that forty one fifty hundred ish area. So again, eight hour RSI looking fine. I mean, all lower time frames look fine right now. Um, it's the higher time frames that I just want to see start to confirm above these areas. It's the twelve hour is going to be the next big one. Again, twelve hour above the two hundred exponential right here at around four thousand. That's going to be the next uh, key of the puzzle. If if it can close above there, I would be uh, I would be looking for more for more immediate continuation into the forty one hundreds actually, uh, forty two hundred perhaps as well along the way. Um, I'm curious how the other uh, how the other top shit coins uh, held up. We got Stellar over here. Stellar, yep, Stellar still looking, still still actually grinding this area out. Uh, will be presenting some bearish divergence on the 12 hours you can see and also being beheld in by the uh, 200 exponential right around 11 cents which is our which is probably our horizontal resistance coming in right around here yes it is so as long as we're below there i would be cautious of him as this is technically making his own ascending broadening wedge which is typically a bearish pattern uh, reaching towards all the major resistances what is our 12 hour stokes saying they are technically up but getting getting very mature um if we can break above about 11 uh, let's call it 11 point uh, 11 and a tenth I would be looking for the full move to about 12 and a half, 13 cents, which would actually be another retest of the overall support trend line for the past year, which was broken in November, and we would actually be able to retest it, which I'd imagine would probably be rejected on first pass. So if, if it did pop back up to about 13 cents, 13, you know, 13, yeah, about 13 cents, 12 and a half to 13 cents, I would be a seller in that region um, for a pullback at the very least. Uh, but for now, still being beheld in by, of course, the 11, the 11 and a 10 cent region right here. We are getting some pretty good exponential moving average crosses uh, going on in the daily. So I do think that it probably does, I, I think that it probably does get another and does try up um seeing seeing some good things here uh what about daily stokes what are we doing here uh okay not terrible mm, getting a little bit mature it hasn't really lasted too long in this region on um, the past prior times so that would be a little bit more on the side of the bears i suppose but price action first as always and you see this area actually taken out i did forget to check out the crypto fear and greed index which we'll get to right now actually ticking on neutral we actually took down from yesterday funnily enough um again same 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 sort of thing here though uh it is interesting to me that bitcoin actually is taking a leg up but the crypto fear and greed index actually going down a little bit i mean technically going down i mean by one it's essentially been the same that'd be a more bullish thing that'd be a more bullish thing 
Um, let's go check out Mr. We looked at Mr. Butor. We looked at Mrs. Litecoin. Looked at Scheller. Um, let's go. Let's go around at the rest of the shitcoins, and I'll do some more uh, some more fundamental things for Bitcoin. But let's go look at BNB. How's he reacting? Did he join the rally? He did join the rally, but not breaking out of the out, out of the lower time frames. We're we're in an ascending triangle. It looks like it wants to reaccumulate this area. Uh, resistance is right around fifteen dollars and thirty four cents. We could say, and supports right around fourteen dollars and seventy five cents. If we do break to the downside, it would be looking for a full on move down to about thirteen dollars and eighty two cents, and then probably overall twelve dollars and ninety cents. But for now, I mean, this is a bullish pattern. This is a bull. This this is a reaccumulation right here in an ascending triangle. The measure move, if we do break out to the upside again above fifteen dollars and thirty three cents, would be about seventeen dollars and twenty cents. Actually, uh, where does this go back towards? This is a pretty ancient horizontal now, isn't it? Uh, going all the way back towards uh, this area right here. Yeah, seventeen dollars and twenty five cents, seventeen dollars and a quarter. This is past prior highs. Uh, not bad. So you know, uh, technically BNB Binance Coin is actually the best looking chart, but I just don't put in the same category as the rest of cryptos. Now let's look at all how well the uh, how like the Zcash has did. Zcash still is actually poking its head above the descending triangle resistance trend line but you can see that yesterday we closed we closed the day right at the edge of the trend line so this is a pretty interesting area as I need to see the daily close above $54 for to for uh, for, uh, for me to say that this that that this bearish pattern is broken out to the upside which is typically a very powerful thing and I'd be looking for a move to about $60 if that were to happen and then overall probably $69 which, which is a great number. Uh well, let's go let's go look at Bcash. Bcash same thing. Rounding out this uh rounding out this ascending triangle. Yes, we are reaching above it today. Yes, we actually even reached all the way to the 89. Um and I'd imagine that we probably do find some resistance here but uh I, I mean, this one looks like it wants to close. It, it, it really looks like it wants to close out above. Uh, Daily Stokes still up. Daily RSI looks fine. So looking at something like this, I'd be thinking to myself that uh, very, 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 very likely to close above it. But uh, we've actually already seen the move from like 140 to 160, essentially. So that was, that was a move that I was looking for. I guess it happened all in one go. Um, if we can close the daily above 144, you could say, then I'd be overall looking for a move probably somewhere around 195, 190-ish area. Uh, Tron Cash, is he joining the rally? Um, kind of, again, you know, bouncing up. We said, don't be, uh, I was saying, don't be bearish as long as it's above the 200 simple. And I think that it probably gets a free ride to test two and a half cent probably. Um, two and a half cent will be the major resistance also retesting in this, this uh, inclining uh, trend line right here. Also the purple 200 exponential on the daily. If we do get above there, then I would be looking for a full move probably all the way over to almost three, uh, three cents. But for now, you know, still got a lot of work to do. Two and a half cents, I would imagine, would be a major resistance. Uh, Neocash was Neocash doing above the critical nine dollars and forty cent region. Uh, did not close the last daily above there. Closed it right out there, but it's you know it really looks like it wants to go. Uh, I would be cognizant of this that uh, next resistance for him is actually quite above, uh, right around eleven dollars, maybe even all the way to the two hundred simple on the daily at around eleven dollars and ninety cents and declining. But I would be a seller right around there because this is still forming a rising channel, rising which what the fuck you want to call it, uh, with some major resistances and prior highs right right above so to me that you know that's that's kind of the play that i'd be looking for but overall looking at this right here not bad i mean very good setup on the rsi very good um, well i mean it's not really good setup on the on the on the daily stokes just, they, they just have been good ever since uh this bottom right here right around eight dollars and eighty cents what's eos cash eos cash doing uh, is he above four dollars nope not quite in fact just taking a stab at the 200 simple it's a 200 exponential that i'd be really worried about however we are actually respecting the 200 simple as you'd imagine you no, know, it's very likely to get some play, uh, but until we can actually close above four dollars, even I would be very skeptical of this. Um, and if it can close above four dollars, even I would be looking, for, I would be looking for a full move over to this horizontal right around four dollars and fifty cents. Um, let's see what else we got. Ripple Cash, what's 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 uh, what's Ripple Cash doing? Can I stop stuttering? Maybe, <laughs> probably not. Uh, and you can see right here, actually poking his head above this ascending triangle, which I would be looking for a move to about thirty three and a half dollars. We looked at this last night. I was thinking that looks like it wants to break out above and I'm feel fairly confident that it, that uh, that it will continue onwards and upwards um, overall though the big resistance that is is this 34 and a half cent region right here um, that's where the actual picture starts to change so as long as mr. ripples nipples is below there I wouldn't necessarily it's a full-on free the nipple type moment just yet but if he can get above there that would be a free the nipple moment as I'd be looking for a full-on move to probably around 40 cents after that and then then the picture has changed um, 
the, it would start to look a lot different. Uh, for right now, though, I would I would feel pretty confident with uh, 33 and a half cent. Um, it it looks to me like it wants to go. That uh, that that uh, that ugh, that was exactly the close that you wanted to see yesterday, I, I believe. So as long as we're above, you know, 31 and a half cent, and I do believe that we did close yesterday above 31 and a half. No, we did not. Oh, okay. Maybe that changes a little bit, but overall, it's going to fall whatever the rest of the market does. I mean, it's not like it's it's not like it's doing its own thing, right? Uh, although it has at times. Monero Cash actually looking like one of the stronger ones as well, poking its head above uh, this resistance trend line right here. But again, needs needs to close above it on the daily, which would be fifty four dollars and uh, seven cents. If we can do that, then I would be looking for a move actually all the way to in this region right here at around sixty three to sixty four bucks. Um, let's see. I think that does it for all of the top shit coins. Um, let's go back to Bitcoin. And I do want to talk about some more fundamental things now. So let's actually round out this discussion with looking at where our MBT signals are, as I am curious what he's doing right now. Um, okay, so MBT signal bringing them up and as you can see, we are reaching ever so high now. We're actually taking all the way up at a 135 and a quarter, which this thing will signal a red above 140, which is very important to me because as soon as this thing signals red, I do not want to be long. As historically speaking, anytime that it's signal red, it has not been good for bulls. These have been major highs. This was this, you know, this was your high at 20,000. This was your high. These were all of your bull traps above 6,000 right here, you know, 8,000, 10,000, um, and all that good shit. If we go, if we scroll back a little bit more, you know, getting the highs uh, of the past prior market cycle right here, the bull trap, very, very similar bull trap to what we're doing to, to what we're dealing with, and of course the high of 2013, 2014, and then the high before that in uh, in 2013. So, again, back testing it has been perfect, and that is why I'm also very cautious in this range. How much more can Bitcoin do without setting off the alarms? Um, because once uh, again, like I said, once this flash is red, I would be on severe caution. Yes, you can rally a little bit higher. I mean, this thing has gotten all the way up to, you know, almost 200 before. And for reference, we're at about 135. But um, again, it's, it, it's one of those things where I'd rather be safe than sorry. So looking at something like that, I also do want to be I also do want to be aware of the similarities between this past prior area in 2014, 2015, not as a fucking fractal, but actually as a legitimate fundamental um, type area in relation to what we're dealing with right here, right now. So as always, when I preface this discussion, I would, you know, I, I go back to, you know, I go back to the weekly and I say, there's a lot of similarities between these guys, not just in price action, but also in the actual indications themselves. We had a parabolic blow off top in 2014, 2015. It cool, it, you know, it cools off, puts in a bull trap right here in the form of a descending triangle, breaks down, goes down for another 52, 53% drawdown. Well, we have the same thing in 2018, 2019. We have a parabolic blow off top, comes all the way down, puts in a descending triangle right here, breaks that descending triangle to the downside. We have a 52% move to the downside after that. And then, of course, your reaction over the course of the next uh, 11 weeks was about a 25% um, back bounce from the lows uh, and then very, very similar right over here over the course of about 17 or almost eight weeks now, about 25, 26% done over the course of, uh, of almost 18 weeks now. And then when we bring back up the MBT zones we were just looking at, we can notice that there are fundamental underlying reasons, or sorry, fundamentals, uh, sorry, the network value divided by the daily, daily transaction value, which is more of a fundamental indicator, suggests that we're actually in a very similar posturing as well in the market. Again, you have a very similar setup. We have the parabolic blow off top, signal red, come back down, putting your bull trap right here, signal red again, and then we land ourselves into this area right here, which if we mark off is right around the 80 mark right 80 mark and from there sorry I, I actually want to spend a little bit more time here you see the first stab down into this area we bounce off of it come back down based on this area again and then put in a higher high on the MBT signal well we're kind of doing the same thing actually if we go if we go if we fast forward to 2018 2019 you can see parabolic blow off top red come back down put in your bull trap of 2018 red come back down to this 80 marker and then we based off of it a couple of times and we're actually making significantly higher highs obviously so is, is something new going on yes well Sorry, is something new going on? As far as, as, as far as like the direct signature, no. Um, or sorry, it, the answer would be yes to that. But as far as the overall interpretation of this, no, not just yet. Not unless we actually start to get back above about 150 on this marker. Anyways, my point is, is that even the underlying mark dynamics are suggesting the same thing as well. Something very similar that when Bitcoin, when Bitcoin gets down to these levels, 
we see the same sort of action with the network value divided by the daily transaction value, which again is completely excluded from all of the price volume and time indicators that we just looked at on the spot charts. So when we're getting similar similar signatures in that and then comparing it to these underlying market uh, fundamentals essentially, that starts to feel very eerie that we're getting a very similar signature in these similar sort of parts. So again, not a fractal. It can actually be easily verified with um, with with our with our more tentacles, which I do put a lot more weight on. Uh, one being the invitational, and also now let's actually look at the moving averages, which Bitcoin, you know, struggling along this area, putting in some time going sideways along the 21 exponential. Well, look at what happened in 2014, 2015. As I'd argue that this is a very similar reaction as well, where Bitcoin did make a couple of reaches above the 21 exponential, you know, uh, reaching even for the 89, which we're actually quite quite above right now, but struggling along it and that would be my overall that would be my overall signal for changing around the medium time frames once again if bitcoin were to lose a 21 exponential because as you see right here the second that we lose this the second that we start opening and closing daily deals below the 21 that's when it was sent on to the to its ultimate red deal to capitulation death hole so again that is what i'm monitoring right now as we continue to kind of struggle our way through here it's going to really depend on where today's daily total closes. Um, so that's going to be that's you know that that's going to be of uh, of great importance. But uh, assuming that we close anywhere above thirty nine thirty, I do believe that we'll have something new going on. And this is the problem with fractals because when I look at my when I look at my moving averages, I can see very clearly that. If we have something new going on in there, then I then 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 some sort of fractal idea is not right. But when all these things line up as they are right now, I'll still be cognizant of this fact. So again, today's today's daily total would be very, 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 very important. Do we close above 39.30 or not? And I, my, my personal opinion is that we do. My personal opinion is that we do. We see some more continuation. Um, so, 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 let's go back. Let's actually put on the historical volatility rank as well. I'm curious what this one will be signaling. Uh, so we have had a nice little momentous move, but pretty uh, pretty lackluster as far as volume goes. So I'm curious how the volatility rank is, hang is handling this. And it is ticking up. Moving average on it is ticking up, but still kind of lackluster. I'd, I'd, I'd imagine that it'd be getting above this hump right here. So that is a little bit concerning. It is a weekend. By the way, one of one of the reasons why I don't believe that the ultimate low for Bitcoin is in is we've we've not put up major volatility on a major low. Uh, this has been another perfect indicator, just like the MBT signal, as we saw. Or I guess I didn't go through that explanation, but the MBT signal been actually perfect on all the lows of uh, of Bitcoin. Um, anyways, this guy as well has been pretty damn good, and the fact is. On a daily time frame, we're just not getting up to that point or, or point one area, or sorry, one point area, which is where it typically does, you know, typically does demonstrate major inflection points on the market. But for right now, we're actually not even getting that crazy on the daily. I I would expect more. This this is going to make me question a lot of a, a lot of my uh, initial bullishness. Let's go down to the four hour. Four hour, same thing. This is very bizarre. This is this is extremely bizarre. This is extremely bizarre, actually. Um, I would expect to see this thing ex much higher. Are we doing something like this? Is the real question. Making some. Are we making some sort of consolidation going in through this area, coming back from late November? It could be. Yeah, it could be. This, this really opens up the possibilities of, of what's going on right now. Uh, that that is concerning. That uh, that is a little bit concerning. So I, I, I would pay attention to that. That, that. that does make me rethink a lot of what I'm saying, but it's not a full-on signal in and of itself. I'd put more weight on, on, on the rest of what I've been saying. Uh, so far, there's been, I, I'd say there's been a lot more good things and bad things. So, you know, more like 10 good things versus one bad thing is, uh, is going to be heavily in favor of the good things, of course. Anyways, um, let's go check out, what else do we want to check out? Have I uh, have I done this video long enough? Uh, let's see. I do want to check on traditional markets just very quickly, very briefly. Did they close above 281? They did. Another close above 281. Again, not bearish on these guys until back below 270. I mean, 275, 274 and a half. I mean, it's daily dual golden cross gaining gaining momentum away from each other. You see the divergence between the green 50 and the purple 200. That's very good. Um, so back onto the Bitcoins, back on to the King Cone. And what is the hourly looking like if we go down to the very low time frames? 
Outley does look like it want, kind of wants to pull back a little bit. But like I said, anywhere around 39.50, 39.60, I'd probably be looking to be a little bit of a buyer. Uh, volume on this, not too impressive for what should be a major breakout. I'd say that that goes into the court of the bears as well. But overall, really nitpicking. This is also a weekend. You're probably not going to get the same volume that you would on a weekday. You know, it's, it just comes with the territory. Uh, four hour, very, 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 very likely to close both this area. And that, that's pretty much good enough for me. Um, I think also the eight hour as well is going to be closing. Yes, it will be. And that's, that, that's, that's good enough for me If the eight hour close above this area. I, I just don't see anything stopping it from 41, 41, 50, 4200 ish area anywhere right around the, actually the, uh, the three, seven, seven, which is, you know, currently coming down around low 41s. Um, and it is the weekend. So it's, you know, it's time to, uh, it's, it's time to force these guys around. I'm curious, what are, what are their higher time frames doing? we got 10 hour golden cross is being respected so far. Let's go back to the 12 hour, 12 hours, nowhere near getting golden cross. So, okay. So this is the highest time frame with, with the most powerful. And let's actually go back through the history of Bitcoin. Um, how's the golden cross on the 10 hour delta time frame done for the past year during the overall bear market? Well, we didn't have one right here. It actually hinted at one for just a second, but negated right before. We did have one right here on this uh, on this bull trap to 8400. You can see once you got the once you got the golden cross, the green 50 and the purple 200, you did get that next leg above a very nice leg. Actually, let's measure this one out about 11 and a half percent. And then what is it until we broke back down below the 21 exponential where gravity took on over? Let's see the time before that. Was there a time before that? Yeah, right here. Let's measure this one out. What was the percentage gain? About 11%. Not bad. And once we broke back down below the 21 exponential, all the way down to the low side of the range. Did we have a time before that? Uh, we did not. The, well, the time before that was like all the way down here at, you know, a thousand, a uh, thousand or two thousand bucks. Anyways, um... Let's, let's see what this would look like if we were to put 10%, 11% on this guy. Um, yeah, that actually, that'd be exactly right around 4,200. That actually make a lot of sense, 4,200, 4,250. So do we make a, another higher high in this area? Could be, yeah. And the trend has been in the past year that, you know, once you get that, actually selling does occur, which would make a little bit of sense. Um, although for now, uh, I, I think we have to take that one step at a time, or at least I have to take that one step at a time. Um, of course, it's not financial advice, I'm not a financial advisor, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't be bearish right now. I would not be bearish right now. I mean, this is, this is not the right time to be bearish. Um, even in this, in this range right here, wasn't really the time, the right time to be bearish. It was the right time only if we were to break below 3,800, which did not happen, of course. Uh, so for now, I'd be, you know, if I could wrap up my thoughts in just a couple sentences, what I'd say is I'd be, I'd be bullish as long as we're above 3950. As long as Bitcoin maintains, uh, you know, two hour, four hour dildos above 3950, I would not be bearish. I would be, I'd be bullish and probably looking, looking to buy pullbacks. Um, if we did break below 3950, that would start to change the overall picture, but it's not until we actually still, again, break below 3800 where that becomes confirmed for a move down to the low side of the range at 3400. So that's, I, I think I can, can sum up my thoughts like that. Again, the next big things to be aware of is the 12 hour 200 exponential right here, gonna be closing the next four hours and 32 minutes. Uh, that's coming in right around about 4,000. So right now I'm maintaining just slightly above it, but uh, even if it closed below, it's not a death sentence. It would, it would, it would suggest be a little bit more cautious, but um, again, another four, a lot, a lot can happen in four hours. So if we did close above, I'd be looking for more immediate continuations to that 4,200 level, as we just said. Um, what else? I think that that kind of does it. Uh, maybe go back to the daily, end it off on the daily. Yeah, daily, as long as we close the daily above the 89 exponential, uh, you know, uh, it, it, which does look extremely likely. Same thing with 39.50 level. You could, you could use them interchangeably and it's likely to line up with there in the next couple days as well. So yeah, that's what I'd be thinking right now. Um, bullish as long as we're above 39.50 and if Bitcoin were to break 39.50 to the downside, I would be looking for a move to about 3,800, but I still wouldn't even be bearish just then. Uh, it's not until we break 3,800 where I'd be a little bit more bearish on the overall structure of this. Uh, as far as this move goes, it's going to depend on where we close this next 12 hour. If we close it above 4,000, I would be looking for more immediate continuation to about 4,150, 4,200. And uh, I think that's going to do it for today. 
been an absolute pleasure to speak with you as always. As always, I want to be wishing you the best, the best uh, Saturdays possible. Keep on forgetting to state this. Oh my God. <laughs> if you are a graphical animator, if you know how to animate graphics and shit like that, um, I'd be happy to give you 50% off of any one of my programs that you desire for creating a very, uh, just like a six second uh, animation, a nice little GIF. Um, of course, I understand, you know, people always hit me up and they say, Crown, you can literally just go into Fiverr or Upwork and you can pay $50 to have this done. But my point is, is that I'm looking for a very specific person. Is I'm looking for someone who might not be able to afford my programs, you know, at face value and, and give them a nice discount so we can actually, you know, work together and, uh, and have some value arbitrage. And then, you, you know, you can get into something that, you know, maybe, maybe would have been a little bit out of reach beforehand. So, of course, I want to offer that up. If that sounds like you, just reach out to me on um, Discord's the easiest way. It's very difficult for me to respond on YouTube because uh, you know it's it's not so readily available uh, email not so good either it's just it, much much better for me if you if you hit me up on discord um, so yeah I'll leave it with that and of course as always wish you the best the best the happiest the happiest Saturdays I'll be back on tomorrow with some more live stream action oh not live stream uh, video action but I will be uploading a another psychological series video today as well as as always on Saturdays and until next time take care